I'm looking at this ramp between like this big block of like we have do not like properly, uh -huh. like a big serious like like cryo scale work potentially after the Starbase work is done, uh -huh. but we don't want to leave it until then. So mm -hmm. we're doing small things now and medium things in right. a bit and then big things later and we're just trying to make sure that those all line up. Yeah, it's part of it is mediating between... Uh, <laughs> you know, that's well done. <laughs> um, don't think I fell off. <laughs> uh, mediating between honoring kind of plans we've had and yep. things we've been working on, but also meeting sort of the uh, like very current and ever-changing state of yep. the game and the community and yep. um, there's some middle ground there where, where like you say, uh, NullSec was part of the roadmap, but on that roadmap, like, industry yep. is happening now, star bases were in between, yep. but, and we don't want to, you know, uh, it's, it seems easy to pivot too quickly to yep. um, like what want things that pop up and we want a middle ground where we... Yeah, we want to have the big overarching plan to stay the big overarching plan because mm -hmm. we get a lot of benefit from being consistent with that. But yeah. we also, like like Rai says, like there's things that we see in urgency of things rising. Obviously, there's a big thing. The community is kind of basically... Like, we've been aware that there's been problems for a long time. We've wanted to fix it for a long time. And we've been trying to... Like, obviously, like, we started kicking off, like, serious NLSEC work like, yeah. much earlier this year yeah. because we saw this as well. But the community conversation has... Obviously, certain players have, have kicked things forward in a very real way, and it's it's brought things to light, and it's made... Um, it's added pressure, I guess, to all... Like, it, it's... A bit it's influenced the time scale. I think part of it, too, is it adds opportunity. I mean, one of the, one of the best things That's about the community is that they're very smart and yep. often know the game at yep. least as well as we do yep. and so capitalizing on a lot of really productive discussion yep. that's going on in the community is actually really good for us and a lot um, of the stuff we were talking about yesterday was springboarded off community stuff and we've got you know we've looked over all the major posts and the major documents and read them through and that's that's informed a lot of thinking and it's brought some things forward and some things back so on this bombshell the uh match is actually ready now so if we can do predictions super quick Man. I have to correct myself. I confused Hydra and PL. We can do predictions really quick. <laughs> right. I'm going to go with Hydra. <laughs> I too will go with Hydra. Um, I will go with Ronan. Cool. That seems like a thing to do. And Hydra for me as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
the uh, Tracking Serpent is still going to be incredibly effective, and a web on that Scimitar is huge, along with the Painter from the Golem. That's going to be a lot of damage coming into that sim that uh, Scimitar right away. Dark Soul that's going to have to do some work here. Webs on uh, Malediction and a Crow simultaneously. In the meanwhile, they're going to try to get that Malediction off the Scimitar. Dark Web Soul that is surrounded by four frigates right now. They're not getting the web off of him. Yep. Uh, wow. Ball is down. Ace Helia, that looked like he was instant. Was that perhaps a boundary? Yes, boundary. that was a boundary violation. Boundary Ace violation Helia from Hydra. Effort. Wow. All right, the Malediction has died. The first one, they're trying to clear the, the Crow off is going to get cleared as well, it looks like. But the Scimitar is going to eventually run into ASP Reload, and he will mm -hmm. go down here with this amount of damage on him if they don't clear out this tackle right away. The Scimitar does have remote shield bots on him, uh, so they, that's what, partly what's keeping him alive this long. But he is ASB in as well, and once that ASB he goes into Reload... He did break web. There is no web on Dark Soul that he is getting up to speed. Hope. Hopefully, maybe not, not up to speed yet. No, he's, well, he's still got some frigs around him. It looks like they're going to be trying maybe to get his He might have a scram on him. Yeah, yeah. All right, they are still clearing out these frigs. Another Malediction is going to be dropping any moment out for Ronin. Hydra is, honestly, the only thing they've lost, even after all this, is that one Mollus that Boundary violated. Uh, they uh, have been doing basically a great job of clearing off this tackle uh, right on through uh, Well, that's Scimitar Dark Soul. That dropping into Armor. He may be on ASB damage. Reload right now, taking a whole bunch of damage, and he can't take Armory he Race going into again. Structure. He's being hit by the drones from Battlestar. Structure is cruise missiles. Gone! That is Dark Soul for Hydra Reloaded down. Now we see a Golem, two Rattlesnakes. They're not flagships. Claim and a Claymore for Ronin versus the Flaggle Snake for Hydra, Triple Slepnir, Mala Stiletto, Triple Merlin Slasher. This honestly could still go either way. We're going to have to see how well the strong the tanks of these Rattlesnakes are. I assume that's going to be the next primary for Hydra. I feel like if you're the Ronin going into this match and they tell you you can trade your Frigate Wing for a Hydra Reloaded Logistics, they might consider that trade. That is a pretty big trade because now they can freely apply their DPS. I mean, the three Slepnirs and the Rattlesnake. The Rattlesnake's going to tank like crazy, and they yes. know that. But the three Slepnirs will have to go into ASB Reload. And if these Rattlesnakes and Golem and Claymore can survive long enough to actually get them to that point, they're going to break each one every time. So Valk is not boosting as right now. He may be passive tank. He may be just holding back his ASB. But he's also holding on quite well. Uh, the damage from... Uh, the entire Hydra team has been hitting them, and you can see barely being even touched. Now they're switching over to the Claymore. They're going to see if that's a weaker target. Good. Claymore is nuded, Nost, and Web down. He broke webs there. Or somebody dropped the web off of him. We do see Newt's coming across the team. So there's a Newt also on Braggle's Rattlesnake. Meanwhile, a Newt on the Slepner of DHP Wildcat. It looks like he's about to go into armor while this Claymore also is dropping into armor. DHP Wildcat is surrounded by Infiltrator 2s, and uh, he is dropping very quickly. Al uh, Acolyte 2s as well. Oh. But it looks like that the uh, Claymore for Ronin, which is all of their links, is going to be dropping off the field first. Uh, I think so. So, but that's, uh, if they can trade that Slepner here pretty quickly, they like Slepner to low armor, DHP Wildcat about to be in the structure. Two Rattlesnakes DHP to go Wildcat off. is still not boosting. He is going to go down. It's only a matter He's of seconds toast. now. And uh, there he goes. He is off the field. What so a now, match, a one-point match with three battleship hulls against two Slepners, Rattlesnake and support. What's going to happen? Wow, Rackham Artist took a huge chunk of uh, damage here. He is being hit very, very hard. We're seeing him getting uh, neuted by the Golem and Rattlesnake. I did see a boost effect from Bok 3's Rattlesnake yep. there now, so he is using his ASB, perhaps just waiting on it. But they got Slepner of Rackham Artist dropping really, wow. really low, Whoa. really low. He is still boosting, but he's not bringing back very much right now. This is, all right. Rack or Valk is dropping, but he's not dropping fast enough. If Rackamar could drop first, then the Ronin's going to be in a really, really great position with only the Flaggle Snake and the Slepter able to do damage for the entire Ronin team. Then they can, that Golem is more points than the, rat, the Rattlesnake for Hydra. If they can keep the Golem alive, even if they lose both the Rattlesnakes and wipe out the rest of the team, then they win on points. And that Rackamar is pulling back his shields for now, so he has recovered some of his tank. But I wonder, is he's going to go into reload before long. If that Rattlesnake is still tanking for Valk 3, by the time that happens, Ronin will have a significant advantage in this match. Rackamar has been pulling range to get away from these newts. It actually looks like he may have given up on that because he's turning back a little bit, but he's not able to stay away from the drones. He still has the whole drone wave from uh, the entire Ronin team on him. And he oh, is dropping down. He's not he's boosted. He's in armor, though. Well, I think the Slepnir is probably going to die first, but it is so close here. That's going to be... The, the Rattlesnake is going to die. Valk is going to die to the remaining Rattlesnake and Slepnir. But can a Rattlesnake, a Slep... Or even a Flagship Rattlesnake, a Slepnir and a bunch of frigates take down a Golem and a Rattlesnake? This is I'm unbelievable. Sure that the Valk 3 is still Bok is boosting shields. again. He reloaded. He reloaded his ASB, and he is boosting again, and now there's one less Slepnir oh, shooting him. but he's about to bleed into structure. He's going to bleed into structure. Is he been he able to hold on long enough here? Every second he can survive, though, means more damage being applied to the final Target Slepnir Painter on Blue, Blue Melon. Melon. Oh, all right. Valk is holding on through structure. He's still boosting. He is going to go into reload again soon, so again, he is going to die. But that but Blue Melon is just dying. melting right through his tank. I mean... Uh, uh, wow. This, just as a reminder for anyone that doesn't understand the context of this, this is hard reloaded up against the wall. The loser of this is out of the tournament. This is incredible. The ro I don't think anyone was expecting the Ronin to put up this much of a fight. So Rattlesnake right. for Valk 3 down. is down, but you still have Rattlesnake and a Golem against a Slipner to Rattlesnake. Slipner will be an ASB reload yep. probably in about another three or four boosts here. So Blue Melon is continuing to orbit in 
getting really close to this uh, whole team for uh, Ronan. He's in nice and close. He's going to pull a bit of range now because he knows he's got the newts coming, but I don't think he's going to be able to get out before they can get at least a couple of newt cycles on him. No, I think he would have to get completely out of range before his ASB reloads. To get, so we have a web now on Braggle's uh, Rattlesnake, oh, obviously the next primary, but... We'll see. Is he going to be able to hold on to this damage? So as this match gets longer, one of the things that's going to actually matter quite a lot is that flagship Rattlesnake flown by Hard SB. He's been nuding yep. the Golem and the, and the remaining Rattlesnakes for Ronin this whole match. Blue Mountain dropping so quickly. Wow. Almost into armor here. This is a big deal because Brian is not taking boosting. any damage right now. He's not yeah. boosting. He's into armor. The Slepner goes down. It's a Rattlesnake against a Rattlesnake and a Golem. This, this is, is incredible. The only chance I can imagine the Hydra having here is if that flagship Rattlesnake can cap out the Hardeners on one of these uh, ships. Blue Mountain is now into structure. Blue, Blue Mel is will going go down. to drop. He's moving away as quickly as he can, but it's not going to be enough. He's in structure. He's still surrounded with drones, and he's down. And he is gone. Absolutely so. unbelievable. Ronan are hanging on here. In fact, Roland may have this match under control. Merlin of Suetona now dropping into low armor. He is, uh, looks like he's going to be next. Ronan figure, let's pick off the support. We don't even need to bother with the flagship. Even if Hydra can somehow kill the uh, Rattlesnake of Braggle, they still need to actually kill that golem because the golem can finish they off don't the have Fricks, the DPS to do it. And that they, the only way is if these somehow these newts do it. But I really doubt it. It looks like we're about to see the Ronin in a gigantic upset, knocking or Hydra reloaded out of this uh, tournament. Not that much of an upset. They did beat Ro no, Capel after they all. They did beat Ro Capel. <laughs> they, they did. They have an incredible team. And this is, of course, like this Ronin team is one of the most storied teams in tournament history. We've actually seen the uh, Nully Merlin team. Down. The Nully team that was filled with a lot of these um, pilots that had been involved in all the Hun victories. And this Ronin team is, again, a team that has been around since uh, they came in second to the third Alliance tournament. And another the Merlin down. The Rattlesnake of Braggle now actually starting to take some appreciable damage. He may just be kind of not boosting. He's in about half shield, and he is, yeah, he's taking quite a bit of damage. Again, he still got uh, Hardener's on, though. Looks like yep. despite the newts, there's I Hardener effects, hardener on, effects him, so. on him. This uh, flagship Rattlesnake of Hard SP is going to be doing a ton of damage. It's, it's guaranteed to be officer fit. Yep. For anyone who's not familiar with the flagship rules, uh, flagships are a ship that not only can't be banned, but also you can fit a lot of modules that you wouldn't be allowed to otherwise. Uh, officer and faction modules in especially newts and ewar uh, and uh, some rem remote reppers and damage mods, which now, is huge. here's the trick. If this rattlesnake of Braggle goes down, the golem needs to pick off a frigate. Yes. Period. So he's going Mollus for Kaddish now. Or a stiletto needs mm -hmm. to die to make the points difference because the, the golem is 26 points, the rattlesnake is 20, these frigates are four and three respectively, so yep. it would be a one-point win for Hydra if these two frigates survive and the golem is the only thing remaining for Ronan. So right now, Braggle is going into armor. He is going to drop. He's got geckos from the uh, flagel snake from Hydra. He has a uh, web drone that he is sending out after Onto the frigates. The heart, uh, there's a web drone on Heart SPs. Actually, oh, the stiletto just... Does he boundary violate there? The stiletto boundary An violated! absolute throw Kaddish from Kaddish Princess, Princess. Oh my boundary god! Boundary violated! Pretty much handing the Ronin this win because there's no way that the that Rattlesnake was the kills a golem in one minute. That was the match because if he stays alive and the Mollus now goes down, stays alive, they kill this Rattlesnake with a minute left, they the might Mollus be able also, to win. Do you know what it also could have been? The Mollus also boundary violated. It's possible that they did this on purpose as well, knowing that they had already lost at that point, thinking that they couldn't keep up. It seems like they would at least but try, though, at so that point. Close, they still they were had, within one point of they, possibly winning if they keep those frigates alive. But that, all right. So the last Rattlesnake gone oh for the Ronin. It is now Golem versus Rattlesnake. <laughs> Crucially, the golem is worth more <laughs> points than a rattlesnake. So this means both these ships are going to survive. We've only got a minute left. There's no way either of them are going to die unless they somehow jump out of the arena. And uh, Gargaris there for Ronin is staying in Bastion to make sure that doesn't happen. We are about to see the wow. Ronin moving on, knocking Hydra Reloaded out of Alliance Tournament 12. So the Ronin are going to actually have to go on to fight to fight uh, yeah today. Yes. So they're going to, right after oh. this match, be ready to go in like two matches for now. That's but they've got to have to be on a huge high. Oh, this they're riding the adrenaline from this all the way. Amazing, 30 amazing seconds high. left. Gargus is taking quite a bit of damage. He's, a half He's not boosting at all. I haven't seen a single boost Maybe from him. There, there he goes. There's there the big boost. Okay. So he has. So he, he was just trolling a little bit. With 20 seconds left. As this match obviously is going nowhere, I'm going to quickly say happy birthday to my wife who was kind enough to let me fly to Iceland to do this on her birthday. So, congratulations to Ronan. <laughs> Hydra is going to be out of this tournament in an unbelievable turn of events, going to the loser's bracket last time. Losing two straight. Who saw that? No, the, no, sorry. No, sorry. Two, two out of two three. Or three. Yeah. Who saw that coming, really? I mean, no, I was not expecting that. And they did bring in an excellent setup. They brought out the flagship. They brought out uh, a lot of damage. And that is the match. That is the Ronin <laughs> over Hydra Reloaded in an elimination match. And we are now going to send you back to the guys at the desk.
September 13th, the EVE Online Gaming Event. Hashtag EVE underscore NT. Be there or be a douchebag. Well, yeah, guys, <laughs> what can we say about that? That kind of happened. <laughs> that kind of happened, yes. It sort of just crept up. That was ridiculous. And just like, I was on the edge of my seat for a while. Then I just stood up because I couldn't sit down anymore. And then my legs went weak and I had to sit down again. Yeah. But that so, was crazy. So you might, That was one of the biggest upsets in, in tournament history. You might say that you paid for the entire seat, but you only needed the edge. That is, yeah, I could probably say that. <laughs> But I'm not yeah. like, clever enough to use that idiom. <laughs> uh, but no, that was amazing. I mean, obviously, Ronin's a great team. They went really far last year. They have like this history of being good. They have the tribal tempest issues from way back when. But this is Hydra Reloaded. Like this is Hydra. This is Garmin. Like you expect greatness from this team. It's got Hardest P. It's got Duncan Tanner. It's got Suetonia. It's got literally all the best pilots in Eve on one team, and they're out. Like I don't. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. Those setups were great. We got to see the rattlesnakes proving to be dominant. Hydra Jet definitely felt like their backs were against the wall. They took out their blinged out rattlesnake, which we won't unfortunately be able to see the fit of. But we can only imagine that it was amazingly fit because he just like 1v1'd a rattlesnake and a golem and just like killed the rattlesnake like it was NBD. Mm. But if we have to like give an MVP to this entire match, it was the fitting tracking disruptors on, yeah. on your tackle wing. Like, <laughs> That's the MVP. All of their tackle wing, they had no logic. Their entire tackle wing, their entire support wing was dedicated to suiciding on the logistic ship. And crazy enough, like, they were using, like, the, uh, the Ronin team were using infiltrators against the Slepnir, which is, like, the worst thing you could do. But whatever, it worked. And, like... They're on a gravy train with biscuit wheels right now. <laughs> like, Going off the rails on a gravy train. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> that was worthy of a championship final right there. That was. Yeah. Agreed. The entire losers bracket is, or elimination bracket is filled with those types of matchups. We're gonna see one in like 20 minutes or something. Let's bring up the results screen uh, since we have it, and uh, talk about the way that this went. Uh, so the important thing that I think we need to mention that we have all of these elite pilots on Hydra Reloaded and three of them boundary violated. Yeah, yeah one very early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that boundary is kind of hard to deal with. So <laughs> now I can finally put myself in the league of like a Hydra pilot because well, I've flown out of the arena and now they have. So like I've got something in common with the Hydra pilot now. That's at one cool. point, and I don't remember, I think it was Kadesh Priestess, uh, when it was down to the Rattlesnake and the Golem for the Ronin, uh, and it was two frigates, yeah. and then just the rattlesnake for Hydra. They were going for a Kadeshi Priestess in the stiletto. They were the golem was trying to tag him down. That and he was it. not doing a good job. No, no, like it the wasn't. golem wasn't. Like I thought. No, exactly. I honestly thought Hydra were gonna win with just right because a that, and a stiletto just bawling outrageous or something. Right, and that stiletto at the time was going 4,200 ms. Yeah, and he was already dangerously close to the outside. So, I don't really believe that anybody deliberately or knowingly flew out, but it was so close at the end there because that rattlesnake didn't end up going down. And you could know. see from a distance that Ronan was going to lose that rattlesnake by the end of the match. Maybe he just got tilted. Like, I don't know. Maybe. Like, I would probably get tilted and just throw myself out of their boundary. <laughs> you do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe we'll hear the story about this match uh, later after the uh, Alliance Tournament 12 is over, but this will go down in... Uh, this will go down in the record as one of the great ones. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and it's not just like they got hard countered. Like, uh, Nully took a hard counter to Hydra's last setup, and Hydra lost, but it was okay. Like, it wasn't piloting mistakes. It wasn't even that close. They just got set up hard countered, rock, paper, scissors. You took the wrong thing. Uh, but this match, like, it could have gone either way until the last, like, 20 seconds. I wasn't, 
I wasn't convinced that Hard SP wasn't just going to man mode and fight that golem down. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, this is going to happen, and it's going to be crazy, but then he boosted. But it could have gone either way, and that I'm, was incredible. Also, Hydro are out. Yeah, Hydro are out. It would have been glorious to see the kill mill of their flaggle ship, though. Yeah. The flaggles, the flaggle snake. The fa flaggle snake. Well, it was a flagship battle. Yeah, flaggle ship. Yeah, flaggle so ship. Flaggle yeah, it was, works really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nailed it. <laughs> Good but yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was amazing. Like PL also have a, a rattlesnake, and it's worth like 80 billion or something. It's should, completely ridiculous. You shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. But don't kill it. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's totally not worth it. Don't ever shoot it. It doesn't do anything. It's just expensive. Yeah, right? it yeah. just yeah. blinked out. Full of plexus. There's been a leak, boys. There's been a leak. <laughs> Op is no longer secure. <laughs> But, oh. So Hydra are out. Uh, nobody expected this, just like the Spanish Inquisition. And here we are. Ronin are going up against the Tuskers in the second to last match of the day. And I mean, let's see if they can continue to impress us. They've yeah. gone. Uh, they started the day. Mm -hmm. And they're, th now they've given us so many uh, rides. They've given us so many like roller coaster rides. Yeah. And we, we, we'll be able to talk about this. Uh, for a long time, uh, and th that'll be their fourth match today. That is ridiculous. There's like so much mental fatigue going on right now in their camp. I'm sure, like getting the the tournaments delayed a little bit, so they're all on the edge already. They had to go through so many hard teams to get here, and they're just probably just full on celebration mode. But they can't. They can't stop to celebrate. They have to think about what they want to do next. Think about their next bands, mm -hmm. and then get ready to go. So, talking about being ready to go, uh, we have to move on to the next match, which is uh, number 120. Uh, we're still in the elimination bracket, and that's the rest of the match today. Afterlife versus Triumvirate. We've seen both of these teams before today, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, both of them are really, really strong. Afterlife has been surprising me uh, all day, and last weekend also. Triumvirate uh, contain, <laughs> contain uh, pilots that are I consider to be veterans. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we've got another powerhouse match coming, and the bands for that match are uh, available. It's the Tengu Loki were banned by Afterlife, and Tri banned the Vexor Navy issue and the Ishtar. Okay, so they were listening to me when I was saying those drones were crazy. People listen to you, at least when you speak. That is good, that is good. Makes my heart warm. Um, but no, those are some pretty good bands, I guess. Banning yeah. out the Tinker is actually really strong. And it doesn't really telegraph too much about what your setup can and cannot do. Because um, generally to beat a Tinker, you need some sort of like incredibly high DPS setup. And incredibly high DPS setups are very vulnerable um, to basically everything else. So if you say, I'm not going to fight a Tinker, you can't bring a Tinker, then that sort of says, I can bring anything I want at the same time. It's sort of convoluted in a way, but banning Tinker opens up more doors for you and kind of is a little bit more powerful. Mm. I think uh, also the fact that rattlesnakes are left open, especially after that last match, people... P <laughs> That's one of the, the ships, to your point, that was flown early that mm -hmm. I, I don't think is going to drop off. Yeah, I know. I think rattlesnakes is, are kind of like the end game. Like when you yeah. see like the elite tier teams picking that as their flagship, they clearly have this, this mindset, at least early on, that they think the rattlesnake is going to be useful in the beginning and incredibly powerful at the end because it has so much utility and its tank is so good, it just it's, fits into so many setups. So if you just look at like the teams that picked a flagship for a rattlesnake, you're like, okay, these guys are like odds on favorites to win most of their matches. And that's Tribe have got that, and I think we're gonna see War God flying the Tri flag rattlesnake in this match. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very likely. They've brought it out uh, a lot of times, like you said, and... Uh, I mean, the Rattlesnake's really weak to a Tinker, too, so there you go. Yes. And uh, Afterlife has fielded a Shield Tinker before and lost with it, mm. which probably explains why they're happy to ban it out now. They didn't feel comfortable flying it, and they don't want to fly against it. Um, whereas Tri, as, as has been mentioned, has busted that Rattlesnake <laughs> out at every available opportunity. Yep. And they seem to be a team that not only understands how powerful the hull is, but they understand how how many places you can put it, how many roles it can fill. Um, I fell into a really bad habit every time of saying like, oh yeah, the Rattlesnake has launchers, but realistically with the way they're being flown, they might not all have launchers. Certainly not the full four, I guess, yeah. that it is. Or wait, is it four? No, it's more. I'm thinking of a golem. 
Long story short, they're a huge utility platform, and I think that's really been the evolution of the rattlesnake. Yeah, I'm so, going to say it. So smartphones. Hopefully, although in a rattlesnake seems almost counterintuitive if you don't have like a more stationary. Well, it still makes sense. So yeah, it depends on what you're up. I mean, against. there's no navy vexer, but I think you'd still, if you have the flag rattlesnake, you have at least one officer smart bomb. Yeah. Right. And the cool thing is, if you put officer newts on it, it becomes like a really, really, really good getting. I would argue it's better than a Geddon, uh, even better than a Flag Geddon. So, like, its newts aren't as powerful, obviously, but the hull itself can do so much more. It can tank better, it can do more damage, mm. and it synergizes well with uh, shield teams, which are very popular. So, the match is ready. Ooh. So, we can just jump into space. Sweet. My goodness. <coughs> what? Always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, are your predictions? Really quick. Uh, Afterlife has brought Navy Dominixes before, so I've got to go for try. I think I'm going to go try. There's something about that team. They're just going to go all the way through the loser's bracket. Try for main nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Try, try, try has been my thing uh, today. Let's go. And in intergalactic news, the Sanchez Nation wishes to expand its borders, and 9HXQ Tag G is one of its targets. They have set up a major base of operations in 3GD6 Tag 8 and are slowly destroying all opposition to their forces. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for sticking with us this long. We are on match 120 of Alliance Tournament 12, day seven here. Afterlife against Triumvirate in the elimination bracket. I'm Bacchanalian here with CCP Fozzie, and we have a Flagglesnake. We do indeed. So Triumvirate has once again brought their flagship Rattlesnake, and it's in a double Rattlesnake, double slap near core, uh, with the carries, Vexer, Double Worm, Double Merlin, and Logi Frigs, which you're going to be seeing the other side as well in the form of Bantams. And Afterlife are apparently not letting go of their Vexor Navy issues despite the ban, bringing in Golem Eos, Triple Stratios, Triple Vexor, and Double Navitas, replacing those Vexor Navy issues with the Stratios, which, while a gorgeous ship, I'm not sure is the best replacement. Yep, so the uh, Try Guys put, or sorry, the, um, yeah, Try Guys put their uh, Golem in nice, or Never mind. The uh, I got the colors mixed up. The golem for afterlife is in close. The try guys came in at 30, and try is charging across the field now with their slapnirs and uh, going to try to get some damage on. Uh to, we'll see who pretty quickly. Yeah, we got some damps down on the two Navitas, so Triumvir trying to do that. The Bantam already taking some damage. Starfleet Commander's logistic ship is getting reps, but he's target painted it and just blown off the field. Just uh, reps did not even matter. That logistics frig might as well not even been there, but Darth Aiden for Afterlife is into armor. We're going to test the uh, Navitas reps in the meantime. Strong armor take on the Stratios, though losing a Bantam early is really bad. Using two Bantams early, and they've been ones down. Using those logic frigs to great effect, so killing them fast I think is a great strategy. But for that Afterlife. Stratios is dropping like an absolute rock. He is into structure. He will go down as though there was just no armor tank on it. Wow. Casper 24 meanwhile for Triumvir's team is through his shields. I haven't seen a boost yet. <laughs> what is he doing? Armor's gone. Structure, there's the first boost I've it's seen. Not gonna 